welcome back from lunch. Um, this is the second session of the Bioinformatics mini conference, and we've got another three speakers in this session. So, but before that, we're just going to have a brief message from Tony Papenfuss, who's the president of the Australian Bioinformatics Society, and he's also a um, group leader at two institutes in Melbourne, both the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute and also the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. But he's going to speak briefly now on behalf of the Australian Bioinformatics Society Abacus. Thanks, Maria. So um, I'm just going to talk to you very briefly about our society. Um, before I begin, this is really important. I'm going to use the word abacus a lot. It's how we pronounce our um, acronym. So you need to know that, otherwise you will think I'm a madman. Um, and perhaps you will at the end of the talk anyway. Um, so this morning you heard from uh, three speakers and who, who gave you a really great flavour of uh, bioinformatics. I wanted to say just a few words about what bioinformatics is like as a profession. So um, it's very broad and, and you saw that a little bit. There was a, quite a focus on sequence, on genomic sequence this morning. Um, <coughs> um, but it is very broad. You saw one talk on um, image analysis. We work on all sorts of different kinds of data and people specialise on different types of data. Biological sequences, fluorescent intensity, images, proteomics data, cell counts, all sorts of things. We come from very different backgrounds, um, as you heard this morning. So we think of bioinformatics sometimes as a Venn diagram, but people bring to that different biases, depending on where they start. Um, there's different flavours. You have software development, statistical analysis and very applied analyses and mathematical modelling. And then you can sit in different kinds of institutions. Um, you can be a researcher or a service provider, but often uh, there's actually a spectrum between service provider and researcher and, and often we sit somewhere in the middle. Um, universally, I think we all agree, I think it's highly rewarding. Um, it has lowish job security in some ways, but it's not hard to have a career. It's easy to move, stay on soft money and move from job to job for an entire career. So that sort of gives you a flavour of what it's like as a profession. This is some history about societies, bioinformatics societies in Australia. Um, the short version of this is we've never quite had a society in Australia up until now. There's been stuff going on that's kind of prevented a proper society getting up off the ground. There was a real grassroots association of Australian bioinformatics in the early 2000s. I think it lasted for about six weeks. And then it merged into this um, special interest group, which was part of Ausbiotech, which was not a society had, and had virtually no membership, but really um, uh, was the, in, well, in some ways was the peak body of bioinformatics for a few years. They ran, um, it had small membership because it was unaffordable to join sitting in a, an, um, a biotech society. Um, and this led to the situation where it was about seven people were sort of the, the membership of that group. Um, but we all went to their conferences and the conferences were really good for a couple of years. Um, there were all these, there were all these, um, there was also these two bioinformatics networks one from 2006 to 2007, which kind of just reviewed what was going on in bioinformatics and then ceased to exist. And another one which lasted longer financially and in fact still goes in some sense. So um, from 2012 to 2014, an organisation called Embel Australia and CSIRO funded um, uh, the Australian Bioinformatics Network. And it was really set up to communicate between quantitative scientists and bioinformaticians and the biological community. Um, uh, an important resource that emerged out of this was a website and um, which was kind of a communications hub for bioinformatics. And the, uh, the society that I'll tell you about in a minute took that over. Um, so up until 2014, we didn't exactly have a society and we weren't having annual conferences and activities like that. Um, but in 2014, we, we, we finally uh, formed one. It, was, it really came about as a result of grassroots efforts, a lot of networking and conversations. We came up with a bunch of aims that I'm not going to read out, except for that last one. Really, one, part of the vision of the society is to develop community, the, the bioinformatics community. 
Um, so how's it going? We've got 305 members already. Um, we have brought in and we'll bring in again about $50,000 in sponsorship a year, which is terrific. A lot of that goes on funding two major uh, training events, one called BioInfo Summer, which um, unsurprisingly runs in the summertime each year. It moves around the country. <clears throat> and another one um, called the University of Queensland Winter School in Mathematics and Computational Biology. So these run every year and have done since, uh, well, in the case of BioInfo Summer um, 2010, it was rebooted. It used to run in the early 2000s as well. We run an annual conference and we use a big chunk of that sponsorship to support students at the annual conference. Um, and um, um, Harriet spoke about Combine earlier. Combine has become a, um, a subcommittee of bioinformatics largely to help support it, to give it insurance and things like that. Um, and um, when we were discussing it becoming a, a subcommittee, um, what, we are, what we suggested or what we hoped for was that it would be, um, what were the terms? Highly autonomous and militant, and they are, they're fantastic. So what are we up to? We've, um, we've, we're involved um, um, organizationally in lots of different things, in advocacy and in training. Um, we've become a member of a number of different organizations which provide resources to the members of the society. So for example, we're a member of the Global, I always have to read this because I can't remember it. The Global Organization for Bioinformatics Learning, Education and Training, or Goblet. Um, and um, that gives us access to open source educational resources. Well, the, um, the, um, we've established an education committee to help coordinate training. It's fairly light touch. We're not really coordinating so much as encouraging communication so training events don't clash. Um, and we're involved in representation and advocacy. So we sit on um, a few national steering committees for bioinformatics. Um, we're talking to the Australian Mathematical Sciences Institute about becoming a, uh, um, uh, an organisation member of them. And we advocate to the NHMRC as well, which is where a lot of funding comes from for bioinformatics positions. Coolest of all, we have an annual conference now and we have the mechanisms to keep it going a bank account and an ABN and some insurance. Um, so the first uh, Abacus conference was in Sydney last year. There are 190 delegates, six invited talks. Um, one of the international invited speakers said it has a great vibe and I think that's the best way to sum it up. Um, it actually followed another really great um, bioinformatics conference the year before which in some ways didn't have a mechanism to keep going. And that's what the society gives us, is that this mechanism to roll, to, to build up a little nest egg so that if a conference makes a loss, we can cover it, and to roll things over from year to year. Um, the next conference is in um, Brisbane this year. Um, it's going to have a number of different satellite meetings. There'll be a combined student meeting, a goblet meeting. You know what goblet is now. Um, I can't remember the acronym again, though. Um, and then an Australian... Australasian Bioconductor Developers Meeting as well, all associated with the conference. Um, and then for, uh, over the next few years, we've got, we're planning conferences in Adelaide, Canberra, Melbourne, Perth, uh, probably not Darwin, sorry. Um, other things that are coming up, we have to have elections, so um, if someone is interested in being president instead of me, please run. Um, I hope that there's going to be more extreme and militant combine activity. Um, we're planning um, uh, an awards committee to set up um, awards in bioinformatics. This is something that's really missing in the field at the moment. If you're a geneticist or a mathematician, there are prestigious awards uh, um, that you can apply for internationally. Those things are um, quite difficult to get in the bioinformatics field. There are some exceptions, of course. Um, but uh, really recognising all, all the sorts of different activities that um, happen in bioinformatics. And we desperately need a new website, so there'll be a chunk of that sponsorship money, um, I hope, spent on that. Finally, a couple of resources. That's our website, if you're interested in the things that we're doing. And then I mentioned the Australian Bioinformatics Network, this entity that we took over. Um, and that's really a communications hub for lots of different things, jobs, um, courses, training events, all sorts of things. So um, by all means, have a look there. Thank you.